Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 533. And Journey with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. You're looking at a beautiful Labor Day weekend. Sunny today, a high of 77. And it's just going to get progressively warmer. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, high of 81. Sunday, 88. Monday, mostly sunny and a high of 91. 47 degrees right now in downtown Springfield. It's Friday before a three-day weekend. What do you think we're going to do? Not much. Probably we'll get around to an open line Friday a little bit later on. You can bank on that. And some other stuff, too. We even got tickets to the uh, three-county fair. And you can win those as well. 534. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 551 and Aerosmith with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. It'll be a nice day today. Sunny and a high of 77 tomorrow. Sunny with a high of 81. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood Trash. Well, Taylor Swift announced her concert film The Eras Tour, which she's doing right now, Right, uh, will premiere at AMC theaters and Cinemark locations across the country on October 13th. Well, that is very exciting news. As expe- Because 13 is her lucky number. Do you see that's why she's doing that? Oh, I, I yeah. didn't know that. That's why. That's actually my birthday is October 13th, so I get to probably take my preteen kid to the movies to go see that for my birthday. I'm sure she did it for yeah. for your benefit. Well, because this is going to be a lot cheaper than shelling out 800 bucks a ticket for a concert. I don't know about that. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it cost you like 400 bucks to go see the film. Well, anyway, as expected, Swifties rushed to the AMC app and caused it to temporarily crash. But as of last night, it seems to be working again. So far, it's earned an estimated $10 million in pre-sale tickets. Not even... It's not even a real concert. And it's already up to $10 million in a day. That's pretty good. Listen, you know, not that I have any problem with uh, Taylor Swift. I I really don't, but... uh... She's like the Beatles. Yeah. If the Beatles had been popular. Who are the Beatles? I've never heard of them before. They were the band that Paul McCartney was in before Wings. Oh, is that the one Yoko Ono broke up? Yes. Oh, I know that. All right, I want you to say that. That's how I know it. AMC will show the film every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday through November 5th. They're offering moviegoers a free mini poster, and there'll be a collectible popcorn buckets and cups available for purchase while supplies last, of course. And you can keep that popcorn bucket forever? Yeah, until it, uh, a mouse it, eats it in your bedroom because you're gonna, not supposed to bring food into your room, but, you know, it's a Swifty. I was going to say, you know, all that uh, all that stale butter will probably make the thing disintegrate after a period of time, right? Yeah, probably. The Swifty fan base is so strong, it's already had a ripple effect on Universal. They moved the release of The Exorcist Believer up a week to October 6th so its premiere doesn't have to compete with the tailor at the box office. Can't say I blame him. That's actually a pretty smart move. You know how many other times you've had uh, releases come out and then nobody, you know, you can't get a shot at it? You never want to go out. uh, You never want to go into the theaters on a week where someone's bringing out a blockbuster. No one's going to see your crappy little film about some girl who's been possessed by the devil. And people would... And I'm talking about Taylor Swift. I was going to say, you might as well go to a Taylor Swift concert. It's the same damn thing. Just waiting for a chick to turn around and spit pea soup out of her head. And then there's the exorcist. (laughs) Yeah, right? Uh, Let's see. uh, The Rock and Oprah Winfrey uh, launched a fund to provide immediate financial assistance directly to families affected and displaced by the Maui wildfires. It's called People's Fund of Maui. It's the Puman Fund. Money for people. (laughs) <laughs> they kicked off the campaign with a donation of $10 million. Adults who have lost their homes in the fires are eligible to receive $1,200 a month. All they have to do is apply at peoplesfundofmaui.org. The Rock says, We are beyond grateful to be working alongside esteemed community leaders. To all of our offered your help, thank you for your support. For those wanting to help now, your prayers and resources are a welcome assistance for those displaced. Yeah, it's always nice when people with money tell other people to donate money. Was well, that... After they've donated money, I don't know. It's like the, the, you got like a like a like a like a small number of people in this country that could just wipe everybody's troubles away by you know helping them out and 
<laughs> you know, just by saying, hey, we'll take care of this for you. You get a new island home, yeah. and you get a new island home, yeah, but see, and that, you get a new they're, island home. They're not even doing that. They're not even doing that. Uh, this summer, a lot of people got a kick out of the Barbenheimer meme, which went viral as Barbie and Oppenheimer opened on the same day, and one of those people was Barbie Oppenheimer, a random 68-year-old grandmother in Massachusetts. That is her real name, but she says most people don't believe it. They think I'm joking. Technically, she's gone by Barbara for most of her life, but when she was younger, she went by Barbie. Barbara says she's totally embraced her summer of unexpected fame. She has seen both movies, but could not handle them both in the same day. Well, she's 68. Yeah. you imagine that? I'm 44. I couldn't handle both movies in the same day. You can barely handle the first one. She watched uh, Oppenheimer first since her husband is actually related to J. Robert Oppenheimer, the so-called father of the atomic bomb. Oh, let's go see what your family did. <laughs> they didn't do anything. How uh, come most horrible. of your how come you're the most of your family are nothing but jerks? Yeah. That guy turned out okay. Uh, Barbara loved both movies in different ways. She isn't going to see Barbie again with friends. She's even going to see Barbie again with friends, and she's going to wear the Barbenheimer shirt to celebrate. It's unclear which one she has, but she might have two. She says her son got her one and then was disappointed to find out she already had one. Well, your, your, na- your, mother, your grandmother's name is Barbie Oppenheimer. How would somebody not get her a shirt of that? <laughs> I think she'd get dozens of them. I think she would too, but I don't. I, that wouldn't be a bad name to have, though. So you know, yeah, Barbara Oppenheimer is not a, a, a tough name. I mean, how how is she supposed to know? No, but that one day it would all come to this. But if your name was like Jeffrey Dahmer, and you're you, know, you, you oh hey, the release of the Dahmer uh, documentary is out on Netflix. You know, I went to a, like second grade with a kid named Michael Jackson. Did you really you imagine being saddled and burdened with that for the rest of your life? I'm trying to think, because I know I have gone to school with people who had famous names, but they were like Mike Smith or something. You know, it wasn't yeah. like uh, it wasn't anything uh, like super famous. Uh, Simon Cowell has torn into a lot of wannabe singers, but now he's becoming aware of the importance of mental health. He's working on himself, but it's unclear if he regrets being so hard on anyone in the past. Uh, he's made a career of what he's known for of 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 uh, insulting people, Not insulting, insulting people, humiliating people on right. national television. Okay. And now he's oh, but mental health is so important. Yeah. Okay. Well, how come you? How come you're just finding that out now? Yeah. How, co- how come you destroyed the self esteem of dozens and hundreds of uh, of contestants? There's a concern among fans that Kim Kardashian is too slender and tight. She must have had something to say. Oh, my God. The last time I was this tight was when Ray J, Ray J. Power lunged the mouse ear in that <laughs> sex tape you can purchase on YouPorn in thirty nine ninety five. That could have been so much worse. Well, I I lightened it up a little bit. Uh, Caitlin? I never got that down and dirty with your mother, Chris Kim, but I once evicted her basement tenants with a blast from the chowder can. <laughs> <laughs> I did tonsil tickles with my tube steak Tarzan. <laughs> What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is what I'm trying to do. I'm negotiating the release of the chocolate hostages. <laughs> they won't come out of there. <laughs> it's like the Toll House. <laughs> Not the one in West Springfield, <laughs> the one with the little elves inside of it. And that's your Hollywood trash at Rock 102. Are you ready for a weekend of fun, family, and festivities? Mark your calendars. Win, win, one. Switch to my plan from Verizon and get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV on us with eligible phone purchase and unlimited plus. A value of up to $449. Head to Verizon today. $449 value applies to NFL Sunday ticket season 23-24 old. Additional terms and embargoes apply to NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube. No refund. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Your grilling headquarters. Weber, Big Green Egg, Uni Pizza Ovens, and Traeger Wood Fired Grills. Hey, good morning sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, he's been shot at by angry drug lords. He has miraculously bounced back from questionable urine tests. And he has brought three World Series championships to Boston. In my mind, David Ortiz is virtually indestructible. Sure, he may seem like a cuddly and beloved teddy bear of a man, but make no mistake, 
He's a combination of Chuck Norris, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and Keith Richards. He is the thing that cannot die because his superhuman strength and durability will not allow for that. So when I heard that some brazenly ignorant hacker had been trying to extort Big Poppy from his vast stacks of money after they somehow obtained an old, su- an old cell phone, I thought, these little scumbags apparently do not know who they are dealing with. According to an Instagram video that he posted this week, Big Poppy revealed that he has been the victim of hackers who have gained access to his bank accounts and have threatened to reveal personal information about him and his family if they do not get paid. Authorities in both the U.S. and the Dominican Republic are currently investigating the situation. This includes police, the FBI, and the DEA. In other words, who's ever grabbed Poppy's phone is going to be in a great deal of trouble. Now, maybe it's me, but if you think for a moment that you're going to get away with extorting one of the most beloved Boston Red Sox players in history, a guy who was able to brush off getting shot in the back at point-blank range, then you, my dirtbag friend, have got another thing coming. If I came across Big Poppy's old phone, I wouldn't hack into it. I would gladly return it to him without instant. Because the rewards of his friendship would far outweigh the risk of having Big Poppy rain blows down upon me with his gigantic masculine fists of burning fury. Sure, some might look at that, uh, look at, uh, look at, look at uh, to jack the guy at uh, untold millions. I just don't think it's worth it. Add that to the FBI and the DA getting involved, and I think I'd much rather return the phone safely instead. But hey, and if a my yappin, sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Go into the Big E, go to the Rocky's booth and get a Traeger wood fire grill. Get a Uni Pizza oven. Get Carhartt workwear and pick it up at the nearby Agawam Rockies or at any Rockies location that is convenient to you. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 612 and Boston with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Beautiful day today. Sunny and a high of 77. Tomorrow, sunny with a high of 81. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. Last night, weather was looking great. I'll tell you what, last night at uh, at Festa, I was there last night uh, introducing, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of these guys before, Trailer Trash. I don't are they new to the scene? No, they've actually uh, sure? been. Yeah, no, they've been around the block Never for. Uh, they've been around for a while. Anyway, uh, yeah, just a perfect night for it. Yeah, they don't. They haven't really done that many Thursday night openings for Festa. It's actually a very small number of them. Like probably less than five over the years. Well, Seventy-five years. They usually say, open up on Friday. I was going to say it usually was typically Friday, from what I could remember. But of all the Friday, all the Thursday nights that they have done. And it hasn't been a lot. That was easily the biggest crowd they had on a Thursday. Now, there you go. I'm sure a lot of it had to do with uh, us giving out uh, 50 uh, you know, Ludlow Classic Rock uh, T-shirts to the mm-hmm. first 50 people. Uh, that that went in no time at all. But uh, but the bands were good. And Trailer Trash was uh, was awesome, as you would expect. And the place was mobbed. A really great crowd. And you know what? Ten years ago, could you have gotten a crowd on a Thursday night to go anywhere around these uh, these parts? Yeah. You probably could have if you tried hard uh, enough. Okay, but I would yeah. I would say uh, Thursdays would be a tough night. But but last night, I think everybody Listen, just like ready to come out, start ripping things up. Because I think that, you know, after what we've all gone through in the last three years... It's t- people want to be out. Exactly my That's point. That's why you have somebody driving an hour and a half to go to the Cummington Fair because you know why? It's something to do. Even and it's not staying at home. Yeah, even if that means yeah. not really going out for the purposes of having a great time. Right. Yeah, I just want to have a I want to have a horrible time and go to the Cummington Fair. Now I got there kind of early cuz you know, we weren't technically supposed to start until uh, 7. But I got there like around, let's say, I don't know, uh, 6.15 or so. Yeah. Got there a little early because I wanted to get in line for a Bafana. Because right. yeah, just sometimes if you wait too long, the line winds up being terribly long and you wait for a long time. I zipped right through that line, probably uh, got in line, probably had my Bafana within 15 minutes. Wait, what was the thing we were talking to the guy with the other day that wasn't going to be ready on time when they opened was that the Buf- it was the Bafanas. Yeah, no, they they had them, but they 
company actually ran out of rolls for a while and yeah. had to bring you know, fresh rolls in. Yeah, see, that's how popular these damn yeah. things are. They didn't skip a beat. I mean, I mean, no one went. You know, no one had to eat a Bafana in their hands. Yeah, I could care less about trailer trash. Let's focus on the Bafana. Yeah, the Bafana was. You know, first of all, uh, I have to uh, offer my uh, my apologies. I misspoke the other day when you said, "Well, what is a Bafana?" And I said, "It's a uh, it's a beef sandwich. It's not. It's pork." Okay. And I knew that. And why I said beef, I don't know. Because you always say the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I stumbled across that one, and I had people say beef. I'm like, I know. I don't know why I said it. It's you, not beef. It's you know, you know delicious it, you, marinated pork. You know what it is about you? You're confidently incorrect. Yes, of course. For, for most things that you talk about. Yes. So people believe you when you say something because you say, "Oh, he sounds like he's a guy who knows what he's talking about." I don't. Well, really, you're just spewing a bunch of crap. I don't know Jack Squat, Steve. Never have. I know him. Not going to start. I've met him before. Yeah, Jack I'm not going to. I'm not going to get involved in uh, passing out accurate information. Now I'm almost 57 years old. Uh, I've got less than right. the 3,000 days left before I retire. Uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. All right. So uh, tell tell me what are the ingredients in a buffon? <sighs> Well, let me look that up for. I don't, you I, I look got, it up. Yeah, You're a because Portuguese I don't. Portuguese guy. Because I don't want to. I, I don't. Can I'm an Irish guy. I can tell you what's in corned beef and, and cabbage. Corned right. beef and cabbage. Uh, it is uh, made of traditionally uh, marinated pork cutlets. Okay. Oh, I like that already. Onions. They had cheese. Cheese is like an optional thing. Uh, some I have seen with the uh, with the uh, peppers as well. You put that in a Portuguese roll. A little bit of sauce. Oh my God, it's so good. It's just so good. You can't, you can't beat it. Now it's a ten dollar sandwich, but you know what? If I had, uh, if I had had like a full twenty dollar bill on me, I would have considered getting two. It's they're that good. Um, yeah, ten bucks is the going rate for a fair anyway. For anything you're gonna get, you know, any kind of festival. I agree, I agree. But man, I'll tell you what. If uh, if if you go, that is the most popular food item. I think I had on the entire festival. Is it like fried pork chops? It's almost like fried pork chops on a bun, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's 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 marinated, but yeah. uh, but it's it's so good, so delicious. Now, hey. here's the th here's yeah, the thing. Ahead. There's other great Portuguese food that uh, is available. Yeah, you know, like the uh, the chur the the chorizo or chorizo, depending on how you want to pay how Portuguese you want to sound. That sandwich is delicious. Uh, but one of the things that they had, which I really wanted to have, and I love them so much, those little, uh, those little Portuguese custard cups, you had those? Yes, I've had those. Oh, they're so good. No, we didn't know. We had a guy bring them in, uh, not that long we ago. We had them, yeah. Yeah. They were pretty good. Oh my God, I love those things. I just didn't have enough, after packing down the buffon, I didn't have enough room for the custard cups. So I just like, I, I can't, uh. I can't do it all. There's always room for custard cups. Uh, I just, I didn't have it. All right. I didn't have it with me. Now, here's the thing. So, Festa goes on all weekend, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a great time out in Ludlow. But there's so many other things that are going on this weekend. It's Labor Day. Everyone's trying to pack as much fun into a three-day weekend as uh, yeah. as you can get. you got the three-county fair uh, in Northampton. you got the uh, the uh, Stone Soul Festival at Blunt Park right. this weekend. you got Free Music Friday tonight. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah, I gotta pick and choose. How do you pick and choose? You can you, you you. I suppose you can do two in a day. Well, I can pick and choose because I'm contractually obligated to be at one of them. So uh, I'll be at MGM Music Friday tonight. You should all come down and join me. Sure, but Aquanet's if, gonna be there. A, Aquanet, whatever. But if you have to, uh, if you can't make it to Springfield, but you want to like park like you know three or four blocks away from uh, the Our Lady of Fatima Church in mm. Ludlow. Then uh, knock yourself out because you're going to have a great time no matter what you do. Yeah, fest is always a good time. Yeah, I love it. There's so I many good. It. There's so many good time things to do. Uh, I'm going to do. Uh, I think I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to cook some ribs over the weekend. Really? I want to do a, a rib cook, right? Uh huh. So I went to Costco yesterday. Yeah. You no, know, they don't sell racks of ribs. What do you, they've always sold racks of Well, ribs. they didn't yesterday. They only had pork butts and pork bellies. That was it in the in the thing. No ribs? Yeah. Isn't I bet you if weird? you went today, you'd probably be able to get... They had beef ribs. No, I'm going to go to Arnold's and get them because it's easier to go to Arnold's and get yeah. them. I was just at Costco. I figured, oh, I'd pick them up because they're probably usually around the same price anyway. So yeah. might as well get them here. But they had no ribs there. None. Wow. They only had beef ribs. 
Yeah, beef ribs are okay, but yeah, well, I don't want I, beef I like ribs. Pork. I want pork. Ribs. I want pork. Yeah, yeah. I want slow roasted pork ribs. Mm, boy, uh, that sounds so good. yeah, they didn't have it. That's a way to ruin my uh, my Labor Day weekend, Costco. Ah, <sighs> yeah, but given a choice though, I, I would I would possibly maybe consider the pork belly. I like pork belly. I like pork belly too, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to make some ribs. Mm. Uh, you know, I just, I had my my whole head was like yeah. ribs, 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 and I got the rubs and all that other stuff, and I'm ready to rub the rib. How many uh, racks you looking to uh, to smoke? Like three. Three is a good number. Yeah. Full three. rack. Full racks. Okay. Three full racks. I got the I got the pellet smoker. Oh, I was gonna do that on there. Lucky bastard, man. Yeah, it's so good. It really is good. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to be bringing them places and stuff like that. So. Whoa, whoa. You're not hoarding them for yourself? No, nah, you share you share the love of the ribs. Yes, well, I like... can't eat three racks of ribs by myself. Well, you have two kids. You can eat leftovers. They can't eat th- two racks by themselves. Well, they don't have to have a rack themselves. They're, they're leftovers. That's why you share them. I just right, thought it well. was so weird that they didn't have any ribs there. That is uh, that is weird. But, you know, during like a three-day weekend, some people kind of prepare ahead of time so yeah. that they go on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah. I went on a Thursday because oh, that's yeah. usually the bad day to go but shopping for a weekend. Yeah, well, but I'll, I'll hit up Arnold's. Hit up Arnold's. Home. They'll they'll uh, they'll set you up. I, 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 wanna, I sing the song every time I go in there. <laughs> well, do you like your meat? I'm here to make you moan. <laughs> Well, smoked ham on a boat. I could do that commercial. I bet you they could. They should hire me to do the singing for it. I would do it all right. You know, I know the guy that puts that together. Do you really? I do. Oh, I you just, should. I should introduce you. You should introduce me, and we can be friends. Just, and I can. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah. T- I'll. Uh, I'll just text him right now and say, "Hey, listen, Steve's got a notion." Yeah. About Arnold's. I want to get some racks of ribs and shove them in the oven. Yeah, I really would love to bring back the uh, the wheel of meat. I, I, to me, that's just like so much more satisfying than anything else we do. We don't do that because we don't do the uh, the work release things anymore. Yeah, but right? we could do that. Yeah, you know, we're out at other places. Like, yeah. would you find it to be a lot of fun? Say, like tonight, you're at uh, you're at MGM. Yeah. Okay, you're giving away T-shirts, you're giving away uh, you know koozies or you know whatever. Yeah, but you gave somebody the opportunity to spin the wheel of meat. Yeah, and that's you, a whole lot more fun than Plinko. And win it, win like an Arnold's gift card. Uh, yes, to get whatever meat you want. Now the thing about the wheel of meat, when you spun it at the at a, at a work release, no mm-hmm. matter where you landed, you always won something. You always won the same twenty five dollar gift card to uh, to Arnold's. Yeah, because so there was no way to lose in the wheel of meat. But sometimes you had meat heads spinning the meat wheel. That's, yeah, that that's the ironic the part problem. of problem. Yeah, but if you just had even just like one space on the wheel, yeah, represented a prize for the for the wheel of meat, and everything else was a loser. Well, that would be that would make perfectly good sense. I think we're for, for, for a place like uh, like MGM. I hate to see that thing go to waste. We got to talk to these salespeople up here and uh, see if we can get that going again. I love the wheel of meat, and I also love the wheel of meat with an unclaimed prize because yeah. that wheat meat's got to go somewhere. The sweet wheat meal of meat. That's what we should call it. You want to do it? The sweet wheat meal yeah. of wheel of meat. With the Rock 102 listeners meet right before the wheel of meat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like it. It's 623 on Rock 102. What's summer all about? The beach? Baseball? Want to know what summer's really all about? Blueberries. Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. It's 8, uh, 629 with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. Sunny today, nice, high of 77. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 81. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. Okay, it's a Friday before a three-day weekend. I can almost guarantee we're not going to work that hard today, and that means a uh, open line Friday, probably after 8 o'clock today. All right. All right. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Going to make that executive decision right now, uh, n- uh, an open line Friday. You want to make another dis- executive decision? Sure. Do you want to laugh? Yeah, sure. That's not very executive-like of you. Yes, there let's laugh. Go. It's Bax and Nagel's joke of the day. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I have usually. On Rock 102. I make you laugh? Springfield's <laughs> Classic Rock. All right, so a couple, both age 76, yes. okay, went to a sex therapist's office, and the doctor says, what can I do for you? And the man says, will you watch us have intercourse? And the doctor uh, looked puzzled but said, yeah, sure, why not? I got nothing better to do. Let's okay. go. Go <laughs> sure. for it. What? 
So then the couple uh, does their thing, and then they finish, and the doctor says, well, there's nothing wrong with the way you have intercourse, and then charge them 80 bucks. And this happens several weeks in a row. The couple would make an appointment, have intercourse with no problems, pay the doctor, and then leave, right? Okay. Finally, the doctor says, can, can you just tell me what exactly you're trying to find out? And the old man goes, we're not trying to find anything out. She's married. We can't go to her house. I'm married. We can't go to my house. The Holiday Inn charges 120 bucks. The Hilton charges 150 We come here, do it for 80 and I get 64 bucks back from my health plan. <laughs> he's hey, he just using it as a hotel. <laughs> Why not? You're only there for 45 minutes, three minutes anyway. It's smart business. Bax and Nagel in the morning. Brought you by Aqua Pump, an expert in all water supply s- systems from the well for the pump and into the house. His local radio icon, Steve Nagel. Uh, thanks, Bax. A Springfield man has been arrested for murder following an incident where the victim and suspect allegedly shot one another. According to Ryan Walsh, around 9 a.m., officers were called to Leland Drive for a report of a gunshot victim. When crews arrived, an adult man was found with a gunshot wound. He was taken to Bay State Medical Center but died to, due to his injuries. Moments later, a second gunshot victim walked into Bay State Medical Center. That person has been identified as 37-year-old Thomas Whitlock of Springfield and was arrested at 12.17 p.m. for murder. Whitlock and the victim uh, were well known to each other and allegedly shot one another in an incident. Whitlock uh, remains in the hospital at this time. He's facing charges of murder, carrying a firearm without a license, and discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a building. He's fighting that one. I don't think he's going to fight that hard, though. Well, I want to know what the argument was about. That's a... I I like knowing about that. Yeah, that's always a kind of a good thing to to hear about. Like, you know, what are those things that maybe we shouldn't be fighting about because it'll uh, result in people getting hurt? Uh, There's a new children's park in Springfield's McKnight neighborhood to uh, celebrate Westminster Street Children's Park redevelopment. Mayor Dom Dom, uh, PBRM Executive Director Patrick Sullivan, and... uh, Jennifer McQuaid and uh, all these other people and Pride Stores held a ribbon-cutting event. Many came out to celebrate the grand opening of Westminster Street Children's Park uh, last night. McKnight Neighborhood Council, in partnership with the Pride Stores, applied for Community Preservation Act grant and a Kaboom Let's Play Community Construction grant. I like that. Kaboom? Kaboom. It's Hmm. Kaboom. That's... The park is equipped with accessible activities so children of all ages and abilities can enjoy the playground. Volunteers from the McKnight neighborhood helped install the accessible Omni Spinner play element and accessible playground ramp as part of the project. We should go down there and play on the uh what's play the, at the park. What's the Omni Spinner? I think it's like uh, one of those little carousel things. This thing looks nice. Brand new equipment. They got the it's a big giant uh like uh jungle gym. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's got those swings, those double swings. You ever see those? Oh, so like two children can get hurt on them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think that's awesome. That is cool. We should go down there and go play with it. You know, uh, today's playground equipment is so much more sophisticated than when we were kids. You know, I think we had like a tether ball at uh, at our grade school and and. And one rusty swing, and that was it. Yeah, we didn't have uh, much of anything. Even the new playground I got when I was in third grade back yeah. in the 80s, all it had was a <clears throat> a tire. It was a tire that was held by three chains. Yep. You know, like, and, and we would get on it and then spin it around as much as we could until it unwound. And I think we eventually broke the chain. Yeah, because, well, it, yeah. plus how many kids puked on that thing. Oh, probably. Well, how, many little, how many little fat kids like me were yeah. on the thing to putting stress on it day in and day out? I'm so glad tetherball never really took off. I didn't like that game very much. You didn't like tetherball? Yeah, I just uh, it was a it was a very brief fad for a while. It was it was something that you could play by yourself if nobody was around. Yeah, but you know, soon after that, I found other things I preferred to do with myself. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, I didn't do a lot of. Um, I, I think it, I would just ma- it was just mainly the swings was all we really had, other mm. than that, that tire I was telling you about. Right. We never really had, like, an elaborate system. We didn't have very much. Uh, Rehoboth didn't invest in their playground equipment. No. No. You, you go to a place like uh, Stanley Park, though, you see sure. all this b- bougie, you know, giant tower with the uh, twisty slide and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Listen, uh, the, you know, today's... Park setups with their uh, 
with like the soft cushy ground so kids don't uh, you know brain themselves if they trip and fall yeah you know it's like it's all soft rubbery type of uh, repurposed like yeah. tires and stuff you would never get that in the uh, in the 70s and the late 60s never it, no my god if a kid if a kid uh, whacked himself falling off a jungle gym that was pretty much the end of him well uh, that's how we kind of thinning of the herd if you will Survival of the fittest right. on the playground. The NTSB released details on the investigation of a railroad employee who was struck and killed while working on the Berkshire line track in Great Barrington. A preliminary report was issued Thursday by the NTSB on the ongoing investigation involving a Middlesex Corporation employee who was struck and killed by a roadway maintenance machine, also known as a driller, on August 4th. Ooh. That's horrible. Sounds re- painful. Report states that the driller's operator was moving the machine north on the track in reverse while another employee was leaf blowing on the same track. The driller had a mach- uh, mechanical failure, which was being moved to a rail yard for repair. When the employee was struck, he was flown to a hospital uh, where he died due to his injuries. As a result, all rail roadway workers were advised to participate in on-track safety briefings. I believe they give those to you when you start your first day. <laughs> I guess you need a refresher course every once in a while. I guess you do. Uh, The owners of the Red Bridge Project, hydroelectric site, and the powerhouse that collapsed last week hope to have equipment in place to start removing debris by September 11th. I believe it's pronounced debris. If you want to believe that, then you believe that. But I believe it is pronounced debris. And the plan is to have debris from the collapse removed in about 30 days, Wilbraham Building Inspector John Walsh said on Thursday. But there'll be a, there'll just be a first step to determining how much or if any of the picturesque 122 year old powerhouse building straddling the water can be saved following a collapse and small fire on August 22nd. Get rid of it. I don't understand this. Oh, it's a beautiful power it's plant. It's a beautiful piece of history. We have to <laughs> save this crumbling building. Just get rid of it and build something modern. That's what. That's what. Like progression is all about you don't you can build it to look like the old one i know but you know, you're talking about the uh, it's wilbraham right yeah all right you're talking about a pretty uh high scale uh you know town here and uh you know most power plants uh, are not aesthetically pleasing especially in a uh, in a well-to-do suburban neighborhood as wilbraham you're right so i can see if you're living in wilbraham the last thing you want to be living next to is an unsightly power plant. Yeah, but it's North Wilbraham. I get it, but it's still. like going from uh, West Berlin to East Berlin when the wall came down. Like there's two different sides of Wilbraham. Right. That's on the north side. Nobody really pays too much attention to the north side. Kind of like living on the on the most southern tip of Longmeadow. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right, right. right when you're, you're bordering Enfield and like really you know, the haves and the yeah. have-nots all living on the same street. Well, I always said that was like uh, when 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 they were allowed to go into Enfield for the first time. That was like <laughs> what the people from uh, East Berlin walked into Longmeadow and went, "Oh my God, look at this beautiful place! Like how, this existed on this side of the border." Yeah, but you got to believe there were some people say, yeah. "Maybe we should put this wall back up." Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should really. It's yeah. a dump over here. We don't, we don't want the people from Thompsonville coming up our way. <laughs> no, you don't. Have you been to the Taste of Enfield? Oh uh, yeah. yeah, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Anyway, uh, Walsh said they cannot put an engineer in that building right now to take a look at what needs to be done. This week, contractors uh, hired by owners LS Power Development of New York City built up a temporary barrier and then used pumps to remove the water from around the structure. But the coffer dam breached Wednesday night into Thursday, and all the water came back. Oh, uh, hell. That was a big setback. Contractors will... Uh, going to need a lot of paper towels. Now use metal piling. So it's going to... Yeah, I know. How many bounties do you need to pick that up? <laughs> I mean, it's a quicker picker-upper, but I don't know how, you know how many hundreds of gallons of water are we talking about. Quite a bit. I mean, it's the Chicopee River, and you're right over the top of it, so I'm sure that... You know, it takes quite a bit of strength to hold yeah. that water back. And you know what? Ye old New England ar- architecture probably isn't going to uh, handle that kind of thing again. It's not going to what? Like, you know, like, you know, water passing yeah. through it. You know, water getting into the basement. You know, yeah. like, 
you know, that ye old uh, New England architecture that uh, everybody here loves so much. Yeah. You know, it, it's uh, in some ways obsolete. That's what I'm saying. Like, just tear it down and build something else. Can't you build something more efficient than trying to repair a 150-year-old building? You'd like to think so. Uh, you really got to see this footage to appreciate how weird it is. But picture this. A guy in Nebraska got pulled over Wednesday morning for driving down the highway with a large bull riding shotgun in his car. They weren't in a truck. It was an old Ford Crown Victoria sedan from the 90s that he modified so the bull could ride in it. It actually looks like it could be oh, one of those old police cruisers. Uh, it wasn't a normal bull either. It was an African breed called Watsui bull that has massive horns and weigh up to 1,600 pounds. The car shocks didn't seem to have an issue, though. Really? Carrying this thing. Hmm. The driver's name is Lee Meyer. He's from a small town 30 miles from where he got stopped. Local police got a call about a car driving down a car, driving into a town with a cow in it. So they expected it to be a calf or something much smaller. Yeah. He told them the bull's name is uh, Howdy Doody. And because Hmm. of the positioning, the back right portion of the car was covered in Howdy's actual duty. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you know, I mean, the bull did call shotgun. He did. He sh- he won over his brother. Shotgun! <laughs> a, a sign on the side said it was judged by the best car entry at an event last month called Nebraska's Big Rodeo Parade. <laughs> so maybe he was just proud he wanted to show it off a little more. Police said they could have written him a ticket for several citable issues. For example, one of Howdy's horns was hanging from a, a good two feet off the side and could have hit another car driving by. But in the end, they had decided to let him off with a warning and told him to just take the bull home. That sounds like, oh, my God. <laughs> this thing is like hanging over the top of the car. <laughs> I don't even know how he even got it in there. I got to I gotta, I gotta see the picture. Yeah. So uh, so this is, okay, that, that, well, that's the wrong howdy doody. Um, oh, it al- yes. It almost looks fake. Doesn't it? This looks like something you'd see on Reddit. Yeah. Like, it's so unusual to have uh, a bull of this size in a car. Why would you want to be doing that? You got to be, you got to be like a kind of an idiot to do this. I mean, the, the horns take up the entire width of the, of the, uh, of the, <laughs> of the windshield. Right. He's, the bull is standing up on the picture, like, the car cut in half mm-hmm. and half of the roof taken off, and that's how the uh, bull is standing there. Right. And then you got like a – it's it almost looks like a piece of scaffolding on the side being used as a door. And how is that even comfortable for the bull? That almost seems like animal abuse. Well, I don't know if you've ever ridden in a Crown Vic. They're quite roomy. Yeah, but even a Crown Vic uh, doesn't have room for the bullhorn. It's a good point. Yeah. I got to say, though, this is probably not uh, efficient on gas to have that much weight – no, you're probably in the car. Getting, I mean, yeah. kind of a gas guzzler to begin with. Yeah, now you're down to three miles to the gallon. <laughs> and you know the bull's not getting out to pump the tank. It cost you forty six bucks to drive across town. Yeah. This is ridiculous. You know, the bull's trying to figure out how we what side of the credit card is supposed to go into the uh, the scanner. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's gonna take forever. Oh, it's one of those lock in place ones. Now I got to shove it in there with my hoof and get the chip going. So there's the bull. How is the bull supposed to enter in its zip code? Yeah, oh, I can't. It's 01085. <laughs> My hoof yeah. is always going to be 555555. What's your what's your what's your pin number? Star 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 star. <laughs> I can't I can't I don't have fingers. I'm a bull. Are you supposed <laughs> Can somebody put the nozzle in the tank for Wait, me? I can't. It's asking if I if I want English or Spanish. I don't does, know. Oh, does, any, I, does anyone here speak bovine? And my yeah, my yeah, yeah. Does it, who's anybody bovinal around here? Who's bovinal? Anyone? <laughs> Hello? Does anyone speak bull around here? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the chip goes the other way. Okay, I see. That's why it wasn't working the first time. You got to flip it in the right <laughs> position to get yeah. it locked in there. This is why you don't see them at that, like self serve grocery stores. That's yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you mean my stop and shop card hasn't been accepted? You know how many go points I got? <laughs> Your Pioneer Valley forecast. The hay bale is 
is in the bagging area. It is in the bagging area. <laughs> oh, this is stupid. And then you got to get somebody to come over here. Can I help you, sir? <laughs> yes, I've got a load of bull to tell you about. <laughs> Uh, sunny with a high of 77 today. Tomorrow, sunny with a high of 82. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah! Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. It's uh, 655 in Steppenwolf with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Sunny and nice today with a high of 77. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 82. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. Check out the uh, Bax and Nagel, uh, Nagel Daily Podcast. It gets posted every weekday after the show. That way, if you uh, miss a show or miss a, a part of the show, you can always go back and uh, and review it. Also, <laughs> also, Baxi's uh, musical podcast this week. My guest has been Wayne Hussey from The Mission. Uh, really cool interview with the guy who's going to be at the Brighton Music Hall on October 11th. Next week, I'm going to be talking to a uh, rock biographer, uh, Nina Antonia, whose 1987 book has just been reissued. And uh, and actually, a bunch of new stuff is in there uh, called uh, Johnny Thunders in Cold Blood. It's the uh, story about the life and uh, career and the mysterious death of of Johnny Thunders from the New York Dolls. Actually, a really fascinating story, and that'll be up on Monday uh, on rock102.com, brought to you by ZNM Home Buyers and Rock 102. Well, we have a survey for back to school this week. <laughs> okay. What they said? Uh, a 1,000 adults. Yeah. <laughs> a 1,000 adults were asked about 15 skills kids learn in school and how valuable each one uh, is once you're out into the real world. Mm-hmm. Somehow, balancing a checkbook made the top five. As it should. Probably it should, but who uses? How many people use actual checkbooks? Yeah, anymore? but you still have like a checking account that you pay you know bills with. You right. may not actually physically write out the check, but you got to know how to balance an account. You mean your check register? Yes. Do you have a register still? No, actually, we uh, well, we we do have a register, but it's not like the one that comes from the bank. Oh, it's we, your own register. Yeah, no, and we just track everything that comes out of uh, that account. The register. I know. That's oh, ridiculous. God. Was that where you had the carbon copy of the check underneath each one? Every time you wrote a check, you had a carbon copy of it underneath? I kind of like those. And nobody could read it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, some. Uh, anyway, balancing the checkbook, uh, 92% of people think that's still useful. How to type on a computer, 93% uh, think that that's... Totally useful. Yeah. Uh, and not just using your index fingers, like actual typing. I don't know if I can do that. I, I do the peck and hunt or the hunt and peck method. I uh, I took a typing class in, in in high school, and um, I'm very happy I did. I may not type like traditionally, but I mean I can I can yeah. type without having to look at it. I remember the first thing we learned. It was funny. I was talking to my sister the other day about this. She was talking about how her because uh, uh, she works in a high school. Telling the kids like, "Hey, my typing class was actual typewriters," and then my, and then after I graduated, then the school got a computer. Like after that, yeah, the kids well, are saying, "What's a typewriter?" Well, I'm a, I'm like twelve years younger than she is, right? Yeah. So my the first uh, typing things we had it was a bunch of television sets <laughs> with keyboards hooked up to them, and it was just this dot matrix printed. You know, you just learned how to type a paragraph, right? On it. I never still an know, important skill though. It is, but it was just funny how technology has come so far that uh, you know now everybody's got the, <laughs> the the thing the size of a the size of an orange in their hand using it. Uh, how to cook a basic meal that is pretty important. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it, you know, you got to learn how to cook. Grammar kids definitely aren't using the grammar rules while texting, for sure. I'm not so sure how much grammar kids are being taught they're not and and a lot of the teachers are allowing you know them to talk the way they talk to each other you know with the lols and things yeah, like that but that's not that's not really yeah appropriate for writing spelling even though we all have spell check now 95 percent of people say that's still useful well it, it does make a difference yeah when you're using there or there or, or whose or whose or we're yeah right yeah 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 see it makes a big difference totally, you totally need spelling and grammar and Siri doesn't know anything <clears throat> the spell check on Siri is yeah it. otherwise they'd be doing all kinds of things with a duck yeah ducking this ducking that yeah we're a bunch of duckers that's what we are. <laughs> 
So there you go. That's your survey of what uh, kids should be learning nowadays. It's 7 o'clock with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Your grilling headquarters. Weber, Big Green Egg, Uni Pizza Ovens, and Traeger Wood Fired Grills. Hey, good morning sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, remember 72 hours ago when everybody was all bent out of shape because Bill Belichick cleared out all the backup quarterbacks to make room for the mandatory 53-man roster? And do you remember me telling you not to worry about it? Well, look what happened. They allowed both Bailey Zappi and Malik Cunningham to clear waivers, and the Patriots signed both of them into the practice squad. Smart move. But that still left Mac Jones as the only quarterback on the active 53-man roster. So what were the Patriots going to do next? Again, I hate to tell you, say I told you so, but I was right in the sense that Bill Belichick had this thing all worked out. Yesterday, the Patriots put receiver Tyquan Thornton on injured reserve. That cleared space for them to pick up for former Carolina Panthers quarterback Matt Corral on waivers, making him the apparent backup for Mac Jones. So who the hell is Matt Corral? Well, you might recall back in 2022, during the draft, the Patriots traded away their third-round draft pick to Carolina in exchange for a fourth-round pick. That very pick was the one they used to grab Bailey Zappi. The Panthers, on the other hand, used that third-round pick to, gra- to, gra- to draft Matt Corral, a guy who Tim Tebow once referred to as the greatest quarterback to ever come out of Old Miss. Now, unfortunately, he spent his entire rookie season recovering from a painful Les Frank injury, which, as you know, involves the dislocation of the bones and or ligaments of the foot, which, of course, corresponds to the dislocation of the articulation of the tarsus with a metatarsal basis. Uh, boy, that hurts. Thankfully, he fully recovered, but the Panthers cut that guy, hoping he would clear waivers too, which he did not when the Patriots swooped down and grabbed him before anyone else got a chance at him. Is Matt Cor- uh, Coral going to be awesome? I don't know. We haven't seen him play yet. But I should also remind you that Mac Jones is still the, uh, the starting quarterback. But if Mac Jones starts stinking up the joint, they have a backup plan. And if that backup plan doesn't work, then the Patriots still have two guys biding their time in the practice squad. Seems to me like the Patriots had this all figured out, just like I said they would. But hey, and if I'm my yappin', sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Going to the Big E? First, go to Rocky's, their pre-sale ticket partner of the Big E. And buy discount Big E tickets up until September 13th. Then Rocky's will have regular priced, regular priced Big E tickets. The official hardware store of the Big E is Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 712 and Sammy Hagar with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. I can't see you, you let uh, this radio show get in the way of eating that muffin top over there because that looks pretty darn good. I only grabbed half of the yeah. muffin top. This is a yesterday, uh, Kim Lee from Miravista came mm-hmm. into the studio and, and she dropped off muffin tops from... Uh, from Rice's Farm in Wilbraham. She, which, dro- she dropped four of them off. Yeah. And so there was three of us here. Yeah. So Marty had yeah. one. You and I had w- uh, one. But there was one left and no one touched it. Right. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, now we have one left and I just had like a like a chunk of it. Yeah. yeah. If you want the rest of it, it's up to you. I thought Dan Williams would have snagged that up. You would think so. I mean, he knows Rice's. He lived a, he lived in that area for a while. He wasn't that, uh, that far away from it. Well. Yeah, but I don't, maybe they didn't have the muffin tops then when he lived over there. I gotta tell you, I think that's uh, that's because they didn't. What I live when I lived in Wilbraham, they didn't have the the muffin tops then. It, they're they're so damn good because that that was like within the last ten or fifteen years that they started becoming this like uh, place to go, right? Oh, for, as far as I remember, place is mobbed, it's but probably the- not mobbed uh, right now where someone couldn't go pick us up some more muffin tops. You know, especially a chocolate chip one, I would mm. really, or anything with chocolate in yeah, it, a muffin good. top from yeah. Rice's would uh, would just hit the spot right now. And you know, we're not really that far away from it, so if it were like out of your way to go pick some up, uh, yeah, you know, it's not really taking you too. What's it gonna? What you gonna lose? Like ten minutes of your time? Yeah, let's really. Say, let's say you're working. You're working over at. Uh, you work at Mayberry. Uh, you work over there at Mayberry. Right? Yeah, you live in Wilbraham. You live right next to Rice's Farm. You grab mm-hmm. your stuff from uh, Rice's, you, you sit, and you go just a little bit out of the way, drop it off here at 45 Fisher Avenue, and you're back on your way to Mayberry. And John Mayberry's not mad at you because he's like, oh, well, you were a little late, uh, but that's okay. You know, I, I, I know this for a fact. Uh, there are plenty of people who live in Wilbraham, mm-hmm. not far from Rice's, who right. work in East Law Meadow. Yeah. Or have to drive through East Law Meadow to get to work. 
seems to me just a little a little bit of a diversion and boom we got more muffin tops I like where you're going with that, man. I'm I not, like where you're thinking. I mean, I'm not asking a, a, a guy from Holyoke, okay, to drive all the way to Wilbraham and then, you know, cut back to East Long Meadow to drive back to, to Holyoke or wherever the hell he has to go. Yeah. I'm asking someone from Wilbraham or Munson, for that matter, to just simply come down, pass Rice's, shoot in, yeah. shoot out. Well, actually, Boom, you're in East Long Meadow. if you're in Holyoke, I'll, I'll take a breakfast sandwich from Mrs. Mitchell's Kitchen uh, if you're going that well, way. Well, you could do that, but they also have delicious breakfast sandwiches at Rice's, too. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you're talking about somebody from a different, uh, coming from a different geographical location. Sure. Any delicious food from whatever region that is, I'll, I'll accept. Yeah, I, I totally yeah. get it. I totally get it. But, you know, for the sake of talking about muffin tops, I only really want to get them from one place. And yeah. that would happen to be uh, Rice's and Wilbraham. I'm trying to put myself in the in the shoes of a fan who uh, is listening to two uh, men with weight problems their entire lives mm-hmm. beg for food. Well, I, I don't. I see. I don't see this as begging. I see this as making subliminal suggestions. We we've been talking about food insecurity all week. There's a lot of food insecurity here. Like we have none. Yeah, and we're kind of feeling insecure about it. Yeah, I can't even make rent next week. My children are off to college. Actually, this place can't even make rent next week, so that's why we can't even get a muffin top around here. Hey, how about a short round of Am I the a It's another wedding one. There's, there seems to be what? What's I work here? for a radio station in Massachusetts, yeah. and I'm very, very hungry. What can I do? Am I the a-hole for asking people to show up with the muffin tops? Well, here's your DTA card. Uh, it's loaded with... <laughs> Stamps and different things you can buy. All no right. muffin tops, though. Here we go. It's another wedding one. There, there seems to be like a lot of wedding ones on the uh, Am I the A-Hole uh, subreddit here. I'm not surprised, to be quite honest with you. People kind of go ballistic yeah. during the wedding se- the season. So here's one. Am I the A-Hole for kicking a couple out of our wedding for getting engaged during the bouquet toss, which resulted in that being the center of conversation for the rest of the night? My wife and I, 26 female and 32 male, got married two weeks ago. At our, at our reception, her cousin Rachel, 24, apparently uh, she caught the bouquet. And apparently her boyfriend, Ross, who's 25. Rachel and Ross. Well, they make it up. They, uh, that's how they write these stories. You don't okay. Wanna, uh, put, you, know, you don't want to like point out who the real people are. Right. This is a worldwide web thing. Anyway. Weren't uh, they on a break? They were on a break, but Ross had been carrying a ring around waiting for the right time to propose and decided her catching the bouquet was a sign. So immediately after Rachel caught the bouquet, Ross ran out to the dance floor, got down on one knee and proposed, and she said yes. And so obviously this shifted all of the attention onto Ross and Rachel. Everyone surrounded them to congratulate them, and Rachel asked the DJ to play their song for them to dance to, Mm -hmm. which derailed the next few things we had planned. I wasn't. I already wasn't happy about this because we only had the photographer available for a certain number of hours, and I was worried about going off the schedule. But what really upset me was that I could see my wife's feelings were obviously very hurt that Ross and Rachel were stealing our thunder. My wife is not really the type of person to want a lot of attention or to be comfortable spending a lot of money on herself, so our wedding was the one special day where she was able to do so without feeling guilty about it. And then seeing it get ruined for her was mm-hmm. awful. I decided to ask Ross and Rachel to leave, and at the time, my wife agreed with me. So when uh, when I had the when I had the next chance, I pulled Ross aside and told him that I didn't appreciate him upstaging us, and I thought it would be best that if he and Rachel left early so we could enjoy the rest of the night. Ross started arguing with me, saying I was acting nuts, which caused more of a scene than I expected or wanted because a small group of our wedding guests overheard the conversation and jumped in with their opinions. Mm -hmm. Ross and Rachel didn't. uh, Ross and Rachel did ultimately agree to leave, but for the rest of the night, people were talking not just about them getting engaged, but also about me kicking them out. Everyone was on our side, but even my wife and I weren't happy that people continued to talk more about Ross and Rachel. The reason we wanted to leave the, them to leave was because we didn't want to keep being reminded all night of the stunt they just pulled on us instead of being able to simply celebrate our marriage with our friends and family. My wife has since said that it was wrong to kick them out, and we should have pretended to be happy for them in the moment so as to not further ruin the night because people would have talked less about it that way. 
Rachel's mother has also complained to my wife's mother about kicking them out, uh, me kicking them out, saying that we should have brought it up to them privately later instead of uh, letting a faux pas turn into a <clears throat> squabble because now that's the only thing anyone is going to remember about the wedding uh, or about Ross and Rachel's engagement. I still think... Uh, I do still think of that Ross and Rachel, mostly Ross, were a-holes in this situation. But was I, too? I'm going to say, uh, I, well, first of all, uh, Ross is the biggest a-hole in yeah, this whole thing. I don't know why you thought that would be appropriate to do at somebody else's life event. Just yeah, This is their day. You've yeah. got plenty of time and plenty of opportunity to do your thing on a different day but doesn't take away from their day yeah and as far as kicking them out i mean would i have would i have done it probably not but uh i say i can't say i blame them for doing it i mean it's it's like an inappropriate act like an yeah. aggressive act of uh of ignorance to me i would have called them out in front of everybody I would have taken the microphone from the mm -hmm. DJ and said, listen, I just want to take a few minutes and thank Ross and Rachel over here for ruining our most precious day that we had planned. And I'm glad <laughs> all the attention is now on them. Let's give them yeah. a big round of applause and just embarrass the shit yeah. out of them. I would have been more passive aggressive and say, hey, I wanted to congratulate uh, R Ross and, and Rachel for uh, taking this opportunity to uh, make this day all about them. Yeah. That's what I would have done. That's a good way to do it too. Yeah, yeah. And that's all I would need. It would have needed need, uh, needed to say. People would have uh, uncomfortably applauded, and that would have uh, put the spotlight on them as being the a holes. I like the way you think, Max. And yeah, Mike. you know. Yeah. Listen, uh, between the muffin tops and marriages, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all for it. Well, you got good views on on, on marriages, but I don't see any uh, muffin top showing up at the door here. Well, yet. it's going to take some time to get to Wilbraham. Right, to go there, there. <laughs> Do you want to hear one more uh, quick one? Uh, real quick. Well, I don't know if it's real quick. It's uh, well, yeah. Let's let's do it. Am I the a hole for refusing to vacation with my disabled friend? <laughs> I, 30, uh, 30 year old female, have a friend named Ashley who's also in her 30s. Ashley and I have been friends since we were 13. We drifted apart after high school but stayed in touch. She's disabled. She has fibromyalgia. We plan to go on a short vacation together to the city, which was Ashley's idea. We planned this over a year in advance to stay for three nights. The actual vacation was okay, but I found uh, being around Ashley stressful. She's ex extremely overpacked. She bought seven outfits, different types of hair dryers bunch of other stuff that just wasn't needed and was always complaining about how heavy her bags are. She insisted on going for long walks through the city, but then would get tired and say we need to taxi home and she can't walk back. The last straw for me was that Ashley had a full on meltdown at the station. I walked her to the station. I wasn't getting the train back. We live in completely different areas. We get to the desk and she asked the staff there if there was a wheelchair available so she could use as she was struggling to walk any further to get to her platform. They said they were all being used and after asked if uh, she booked assistance, and she hadn't, and they told her a chair should be available in around an hour. She lost her cool and yelled at them and said she's going to miss her train, and she sat on the floor. I tried to calm her down, but there was just no use. She was uh, very insulting and called them names. It was very embarrassing. I stayed with Ashley, and eventually the manager arrived with a wheelchair. He helped Ashley, and she went home. Two days after we got home, Ashley asked me if I'd be down for a similar vacation next year. I said, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. I tried to explain to her that I think after our experience, it's better if we don't vacation together. She's now angry with me and mm. said I'm being, uh, uh, I'm being ableist. Right? Okay. All right. right. Okay. But I struggled to put up with how disorganized she is in regards to her own needs. So am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole. Here's the thing. You're not uh, pissed off at her because she's disabled. You're pissed off at her because she's a jerk. Yeah, and even somebody here says uh, in the, uh, listen, I have MS, and I know I can only do so much in my day. Right. So I plan my life around what I'm able to do, not what others aren't right. able to do. But that's not a justification for acting like a jerk. That's what I mean. She's uh, she's kind of acting a little high on her horse there. Yeah, I mean, uh, no offense. Uh, I, I'm I'm sorry for your disability, and uh, if you're able to uh, to live uh, with it, uh, you know all the power to you. But 
that's not an excuse to be a jerk. Yes. Does uh, does fibromyalgia also involve something being stuck inside a certain place in your body? Yeah, like a bug, a hair, like a your bug. entire head, yeah, one of those things. Thing. Yeah, any of those things. <laughs> Is that one of the side effects of fibromyalgia? I don't think so. Uh, it might be. Well, there you go. There's your round of Am I the A? It's 724 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. GG. It's 727 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, Steve, let me ask you this. Could you use an extra $1,000 in your pocket? Uh, Yeah. You know what? I could too. Sadly, we, uh, you and I are not eligible to win, but uh, starting Tuesday morning, uh, September 5th, we're going to give uh, people a chance to find out how they could win a thousand dollars listen even if we were eligible to win they'd find a way to make us not eligible to win it yeah right, right. A, well we didn't you know there'd be a lot of stipulations yeah, involved yeah, yeah. well not at a thousand dollars sure not at a time but we're going to pay you one dollar a week for the next thousand weeks yeah i'm all aboard on that one <laughs> we had open line friday coming up after eight o'clock and we have news next to rock 102 here's your west four two four violent crime in springfield is on the rise I'm Brian Santanello, and I'm running for Springfield City Council, and I have a plan to reduce crime. Implement walking police patrols in all our neighborhoods, and increase community policing. Clean up our vacant lots and abandoned buildings, and improve our street lighting. Please vote Brian Santanello for Springfield City Council. Let's make Springfield a safer place to live. Paid for by the Santanello Committee. 731 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. Crews on Thursday raised parts of the former Cinemark 16 screen movie theater at the now shuttered Eastfield Mall. A step towards retail rebirth. A rebirth. (laughs) We will knock down this mall and we will make another mall. One where people will go. Maybe. After years One of the, where merchants can sell their wares. After uh, years of decline at the mall, Onyx uh, Partners Limited purchased the 56-year-old center in March for $4.5 million and set into motion of plans for a $65 million to $85 million redevelopment of the 46-acre site on Boston Road near the uh, springfield Wilbraham line. Work is expected to take two years. Uh, Onyx has not made public which tenants will occupy the new plaza. The It'll mall. be uh, Caldor. It'll be Zares mm-hmm. uh, and Ames. Uh, what else is uh, are we woefully behind on? Um, Grants. Grants. Grants yeah. will be a good one. Uh, Steigers will be in there. Bonton. Bonton. Yeah. Why don't we have a Bonton should, locally? A Filene's Basement. I would that, l- a that, Leechmere. There's no basement at the Ace Fail Mall. <laughs> you, could do, you could do like the Pee Wee thing. <laughs> Can we see the basement? <laughs> There's no basement at the Eastfield Mall. Boston Road. Yeah. Once saw the worst accident I had ever seen. <laughs> we once saw a guy fighting with himself in the empty parking lot. I have video of that, too. <laughs> fighting with himself? There was a guy, like, fight, we were... We were selling meat out of the back of a truck last year, yeah. and uh, there was a guy over in the corner of the parking lot <laughs> fighting with himself. He, like, he was like punching himself. Yeah, he was doing like all the ninja moves and all that stuff. Oh, he was like, uh, like, yeah. like he was uh, fighting with an invisible man. Did he win? I don't think so. You know, you know who I, you know who really won the bottle of pop off. <laughs> that's that's who. Uh, he was the only. The pop off was the only thing that could yeah. finish. The uh, mall closed in July with the final retailers moving out over the past few weeks. The Hamden County Sheriff's Department used the mall for training about a month ago. Hmm. Now look at them. All right, listen, guys. Uh, we're selling orange Juliuses at the picnic next year. We're going to need you all to learn how to make these things. Don't you just press the button and hold the cup under the dispenser? That's neither here nor there, uh, Martin. <laughs> I'm just making up. Now. <laughs> now you put that cup under the dispenser and you push the button. Ah, oh, you're spilling it everywhere. <laughs> Maybe got, maybe we should get you guys back yeah. to taking care of prisoners instead of making Orange Juliuses. That's not really a high-skilled job, was it, to work at the Orange Julius? No. But I like uh, workers also removed asbestos contamination from the building over the past few weeks. <laughs> what made the Sheriff's Department think this is a good idea to train with all this <laughs> asbestos hanging around? 
I didn't realize we had so much asbestos in there. Yeah, yeah. I guess we did. Always a safe place to go. A uh, Massachusetts driver gave police an interesting excuse when she was arrested while driving the wrong way on a New Hampshire highway early Thursday morning. Uh, state troopers in New Hampshire saw a vehicle going north in the southbound lanes on I-93 in Salem around 2.20 a.m. Troopers stopped the driver, later identified as 26-year-old Vanessa Doobie uh, of Haverhill. Is it Haverhill? Haverhill? Uh, Haverhill. Yeah, and she uh, passed the uh, exit one off-ramp. The uh, area that Doobie uh, entered is unknown, according to the department, and troopers were able to catch her before anyone called 911. When she was stopped, she told the troopers... She was just following her GPS. Yes. Doobie was arrested and charged with reckless conduct, aggravated DWI, mm-hmm. and reckless operations. She'll now, was it, was court. Doobie her actual last name or a nickname? Uh, I think it's uh, both. Hmm. Doobie the Doobie. Interesting. It's D-U-B-E-Y. So is it Dubay? Uh, no, that would be like Doobie. Doobie. Yeah. So, uh, so here's the thing. Yeah, you know, you've used uh, GPS. Yes, I've used GPS. I've used several different kinds of GPS. I've never had a GPS tell me to go the wrong way on a highway. No, I've never had the GPS tell me to go in the wrong direction. But I have had a GPS tell me bad directions, very bad directions. Yes. One time years ago. I was uh I had to go meet somebody in I think it was Chesterfield maybe mm-hmm. which is about 20 minutes from my house. Well, it was like one of those wintry nights where like it started sleeting and then like you know the accumulation started happening. Right. So I take this route uh from Route 112 in Huntington and it shows you how to get there on this on the on the GPS and it's telling me to go this road. Uh, so I turned down this road in Worthington, and as I'm driving on this road in Worthington, I quickly realize this isn't really a road. This is like this is a dirt road, right? Because and now I'm already like three quarters of a mile down it because it's getting smaller and smaller as I drive, and right. I'm looking at the map, and the map shows that it connects with another major road. But I think the road is really only open like April through October. <laughs> it's not really open to traffic. And yeah. as I go down, I I come to a hill, and I'm in a Nissan Murano at the time. Which, you should point out, the first part of that Murano is a moron. Yes, yes, a very much so a moron. And I go, you know what, I got to back up and like turn around, but there's like no really way to back up because... I'm now next to an abandoned home in right. the middle of the woods. So I try to go up this hill, and then I was like, well, I'm just going to back up. And as I back up, the ice just pushes the car back <laughs> down the hill. And I said to myself, this is how it ends. Yeah, this I'm going to die in the middle of the woods in Worthington. I, uh, I once had a GPS, and I don't even know where I was, but it was like one of those areas where you don't have a lot of great signal mm-hmm. on anything. And uh, I was crossing a bridge over a body of water. Yeah. And about halfway into the into the bridge, yeah. it was telling me to turn right. Yes. Yeah, which would have been directly into the water. Yeah. There's a chance that might not have been an accurate description from I, the GPS. It probably was not. Yes. Yeah. See, I, 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 in, originally when GPSs first came out, they rarely worked in like cities because you had so many interchanges going around. I'm like, how does this thing know exactly where you are? And it didn't. It yeah. would tell you to like take a right off this ramp when it when you're you're in Boston, telling you to go Commonwealth Avenue when Commonwealth Avenue is really <laughs> should be on the off the exit of the other road that you should be on. Right. So so that was kind of confusing. And when and they used to freeze up. I was in a I was in a car one time with a guy. We were going to a comedy show. And he's like, hey, was that thing, or were we supposed to get off somewhere? And I'm looking at the GPS, the thing is frozen in place. Oh, my God. And we had traveled like 25 minutes out of the way because we were waiting for the prompt from the GPS. Yeah, that's bad. That's not that's But I not never, right. I never had a GPS tell me to go the wrong way or into a body of water like <laughs> we've heard of those people that do that. I know. A uh, city man federally indicted in an alleged $2 million catalytic converter theft ring earlier this year was indicted this week by Hamden County Grand Jury for the 2022 murder of Giovanni Saldana. 
30-year-old Sadana was found face down on Worthington Street in a parking garage in the early morning hours of December 31st, police said. He was uh, riddled with shock, with gunshot wounds, and the shooting appeared to happen while officers were trying to quell a large brawl with more gunfire outside the garage. Nicholas Davila was indicted in U.S. District Court in April, along with six other men accused of stealing hundreds of catalytic converters across Massachusetts New Hampshire. Davila, 26, is now being held without the right to bail at Wyatt Detention Center in Rhode Island while the federal case is pending. He was indicted in Springfield on August 28th, according to records. As far as the catalytic converter uh, caper, the alleged players were exploiting the black market for catalytic converters who cores pres- whose core precious metals are an illicit commodity, according to federal court records related in the case. And then they go on to say why thieves steal catalytic converters because they get money from the platinum that's inside of them. But he's also being charged with murder. See? Wow. You get you get caught, and then they link forensic evidence to you. Oh, that's the guy we were looking for that shot the other guy back in December. You know, had he just stuck to one crime at a time, it would have been harder for them to uh, find him, probably. Isn't that a song by uh, Johnny Cash, One Crime at a Time? Uh, maybe. I don't, uh, I don't know that one. Are you dying for a low number license plate on your car? Am I? Well, you better get, well, you should have gotten on that yesterday because the entry closed at 5 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Uh, And there were 191 plates available in this year's draw, according to the Mass uh, Registry of Motor Vehicles. I ran into a guy we know yesterday, and he said to me, I got a low number license plate. Are you not going to talk to me anymore? Because I must have made some comment that, you're a douchebag if you're going for a low number license plate. And he uh, remembered that conversation? He must have remembered that conversation. Well, it sticks with you when you do things that you hear people have opposing opinions about. But I said, no, I've always thought you were a douchebag. I <laughs> would never. <laughs> your think of, your, your would plate never numbers are relevant. Any less of you. <laughs> I'm just not going to think any more of you. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that, that's a thing. There's people. But he explained to me. He's like, this was like a. It was it was like a, like a grandfather had this same plate, and it's been passed down. I can see that. I can see that okay. going on. But right. uh, if you're just like going out there just to get a low number, for what? For the status of it. That's that's the whole thing. I guess. You know, the thing about it though, is even if even if it was like a plate passed down from you know one family member to the next. Yeah. The average idiot on the road doesn't realize that, and they see you with a low number plate, and they're just thinking you're just a obnoxious, well, you're special. self-centered jerk. Well, you're special. You're privileged. You know? I guess. Uh, and he's the people who are eligible. Only one entry per applicant will be accepted, no matter how many active registrations that you have. You must be a Massachusetts resident with a currently active registered and insured passenger vehicle. Companies and corporations may not apply. Uh, mass DOT employees, including contract employees and their families, are not eligible. It's like it's like a contest for a radio station. That's, yeah, it is. I mean, so like Rock 102's van couldn't get a like a 102 yeah. plate. In- immediate family member refers to one's parents, spouse, children, and brothers and sisters, according to the RMB. Is this because of what Karen Polito did? Because um, she was giving out the Red Sox plates to her friends and family. I think oh, this yeah. rule changed because she was fixing that. I forgot all about that. And then, yeah, yeah, that's probably why they had to put that radio contest rule in there. You can't win if you're, if you're, you're, you're related. related to, yeah, I know. Uh, the state will not honor requests for specific plate numbers. Eligible applicants will be considered for all the plates listed. Plates will be awarded in the order which they are listed uh, at mass.gov.rmv. Uh, I, uh, eligible plates. You ready? Yep. 5341, 5618, 6879, and 1003, just to name a few. What also I got, wouldn't do to have 1003. You also got I, could, I would stick a, stick a man with a shiv just to get that number. 13F. Okay. 2611. Mm-hmm. 301. 409744N that's on the list. Okay. 54K. See they have to mean something to you. But none of them do. To, that's what they're, I they're, mean. They're like randomly shoot, it's like a code generator. What about 83M? If you always wanted an 83M before. No. No, I don't need that. You sure about that? No, but yeah, yeah I, I mean for the most part. 
Uh, your Pioneer Valley forecast today going to be sunny with a high of 77 tomorrow, sunny with a high of 82. It's 49 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Aww. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock, 752 in Kansas with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is uh, going to be a sunny and nice day today. Dry, high of 77 tomorrow. More of the same with a high of 82. It's 49 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, Steve and the road crew are going to be at Free Music Friday tonight at the Plaza at MGM from 7 to 9. Aquanet, tribute to 80s rock and metal, will be performing a hell uh, of a band. Aquanet. It's Aquanet. Whatever. Okay. Uh, visit Steve and the road crew for your chance to win wicked cool prizes. The Plaza Bar be open uh, for all Free Music Fridays, uh, offering uh, summer cocktails, beers, and uh, non-alcoholic beverages, too. You can also visit TGIF Square, where you'll find uh, White Lion, Wild Dandelion, uh, the Beer Trailer, the new Shot Sheds during summer offerings from uh, local distillers, Top Golf Swing, and uh, Indian Motorcycle, and more. Cap Sports Bar also open before and after the concert as well, so the fun doesn't have to end when everything wraps up with Aquanet. Join Steve tonight, 7 to 9, at the Plaza at MGM, from Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. I think we should do this bit one final time. And then uh, when the September uh, really kicks into gear, even though it's September 1st today, when it kicks into gear on Tuesday, we can just not do this ever again. Okay, I'm good with Is that. Is that okay? I'm fine with that. All right, so uh, now finally hear this. Now hear this with Bex and Nagel on Rock 102. Should be pointed out that after now... This uh, this very day, yeah, you will not hear this. No, and they're gonna make us come up with some other stupid thing to yeah, so, put out there. Yeah, so yeah. Hey, hey, hey. you can't just do, do nothing. You remember uh, the other day when we were talking about the uh, winner announced for the national kids mullet yes uh, championship? Well, a Tennessee woman made it into the Guinness Book of World Records for having the longest mullet, five feet eight inches. There's Tammy Manis talking about why she started growing out the longest mullet. Growing the longest mullet never really started out as anything other than it was the 80s and everybody had a rat tail and I started growing mine and over the years it's just kept growing, so I've kept it. I'm actually in the 2024 edition of the Guinness World Records for the world's longest mullet. All right. That is pretty amazing. Yeehaw. I'm looking at it right now. It's a... It's quite a mullet. It's a hell it? of a mullet. Yeah, yeah. I would not. Uh, I would not keep that. She's a good looking dude. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. She looks like Joe Dirt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very much like Joe. Very Dirt. Very much like Joe Dirt. Uh, Hot Pockets is teaming up with the internet show Hot Ones to come out with four different snacks that bring the heat. What is the obsession with? Like ghost pepper. What is this whole thing? The ghost peppers and the one chip challenge. And there are some people that like to put themselves in harm's way. Why? Because it, uh, it's status. Same thing. Like uh, you know the low uh, you know plate number. Everybody it, wants. You want everyone to know that you have no regard for your mouth. Is it so? It's like a like a um, a ball waving thing if you know what i'm saying yeah Let's it's it's got it's, the bigger set it's an attention seeking uh situation in which you prove that you are tougher than the average person who would say i would never stick something like that in my mouth can you do the one chip challenge that comes wrapped one chip at a time in plastic because it's so hot yeah you know what i'd rather have a bag full of chips for the same price yeah. as one Anyway, each Hot Pocket will have a different level of heat with the final one claiming to be the hottest pocket ever. Here's the uh, Hot Pocket jingle. Hot Pocket. Yeah, that's right, baby. <sighs> Listen, if you've had a Hot Pocket, a regular Hot Pocket, yeah. you know it's not really worth the effort of going through a Hot Pocket because the inside of a Hot Pocket is kind of like molten lava to begin with. You know what? Uh, I think I heard that after finishing the uh, Kim Kardashian Ray J sex tape. Hot Pocket. You know? Yum. Uh, just, yeah, yum. Yeah. <laughs> you're, now you're mixing Red Robins and Blue. <laughs> Which I believe is one of the acts that he did that was called that uh, in that tape. And then uh, he finished and he said, hey, Kim, there you go. Yum. Yum. <laughs> a uh, professor at Nichols State University in Louisiana resigned after student journalists exposed the facts that he had a clown makeup fetish and would make students wear the makeup as an assignment. 
Really? Hey, everybody. We're going to dress up like clowns today. This is going to be a great assignment. We're all going to so work in groups. Fun. The professor went to as far as admitting the sexual preference and fact that he made students put on the makeup via his social media. Here he is, Professor, uh, professor Joseph Talkish, talking about the assignment uh, to student reporters at KNSU-TV. So I have uh, an assignment in my class, and basically what uh, that class is, cultural geography. And that's an assignment in uh, one of my classes where they actually come up with their own face paint <laughs> and makeup design inspired by a culture and they implement Ooh, this guy's yeah, creepy, I mean, it's, huh? it's a requirement for the class. And then we're all going to uh, try to squeeze into a very small car together. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I like you kids wearing the clown makeup. Look Makes at you with those oversized shoes. Yeah, college girls in clown makeup. I wouldn't mind if you were digging the heels of those oversized red shoes into the small of my back. You want to hear something, honey? Hot pockets. Yeah, yum. that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, yo. <laughs> I keep forgetting the yum. <laughs> and there you go. That's the last time you'll hear Now Hear This at 758 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Your grilling headquarters. Weber, Big Green Egg, Uni Pizza Ovens, and Traeger Wood Fired Grills. Hey, good morning sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, he has been shot at by angry drug lords. He has miraculously bounced back from questionable urine tests. He has been responsible for bringing three World Series championships to Boston. In my mind, David Ortiz is virtually indestructible. Sure, he may seem like a cuddly and beloved teddy bear of a man, but make no mistake, he is a combination of Chuck Norris, Claude, John Claude Van Damme, and Keith Richards. He is the thing that cannot die because his superhuman strength and durability will now not allow for it. So when I heard that some brazenly ignorant hacker was trying to extort Big Poppy from his vast stacks of money after they somehow obtained an old cell phone, I thought these little scumbags apparently don't know who they're dealing with. According to an Instagram video that he posted this week, Big Poppy revealed that he has been the victim of hackers who have gained access to his bank accounts and have threatened to reveal personal information about him and his family if they do not get paid. Authorities in both the U.S. and in the Dominican Republic are currently investigating the situation. This includes police, the FBI, and the DEA. In other words, who's ever grabbed Poppy's phone is going to be in a great deal of trouble. Now, maybe it's just me, but if you think for a moment that you're going to get away with extortion against one of the most beloved Red Sox players in history, a guy who was able to brush off getting shot in the back at point-blank range, then you, my dirtbag friend, have got another thing coming. If I came across Big Poppy's old phone, I wouldn't hack into it. I would gladly return it to him uh, without incident because the rewards of his friendship would far outweigh the risk of having Big Poppy rain bound blows upon me with his gigantic masculine fists of burning fury. Sure, some might look at uh, look to jack the guy out of untold millions. I just don't think it's worth it. Add that to the FBI and the DAA uh, getting involved, and I think I'd much prefer to return the phone. But hey, enough of my yapping sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Going to the Big E? Go to the Rocky's booth and get a Traeger Wood Fire Grill or an Uni Pizza Oven. Get Carhartt Workwear and pick it all up at the nearby Agawam Rockies or any Rockies that's convenient for you. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 812 and Queen with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be a really sunny and nice day today. Uh, high of 77. Tomorrow, high of 82. It's 52 right now in downtown Springfield. And now, live from the Richard Grieco Studios in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts, it's Open Live Friday! 293-1021. That's the number for Open Line Friday. Again, let's uh, let's set the guardrails up here. No filthy language. And keep your irresponsible hate speech for some other radio show. And remember to get your pets spayed and neutered. Yeah. I just feel like uh, we should do that Bob Barker tribute when we every time we play this song. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Oh, the phones are already blowing up. Mm-hmm. Rock 102, good morning, who's this? 
Hey, this is Dave from Enfield. How you guys? How, how you ladies doing this morning? Uh, we're oh, good, Dave. Man. How are you? I keep your microaggressions hey, to yourself, hey. sir. <laughs> uh, What's up? Actually, I got, I got an interface for you today. Um, I am minus 62 days, uh, 5 hours, and 47 minutes. Because back in June, I could have retired. Yeah. And today is my last day. Today? Yep. Really? This lovely tractor trailer. Yes. Wow. Congratulations, Congratulations. dude. Congratulations. Wow. I'm, yeah, I, I hear a guy like that, like that, like you, and I was at a, a college reunion a couple months ago, and like four or five people t- telling me they're all retired. And all I can say is, man, I've got 2,935 days, 15 hours, seven, 47 minutes left to go. And I'm like counting down every second. Did, did you have your 3,000 mark uh, uh, party, or, or how'd that go off? Uh, you know, I thought with 3,000 days, it's still a lot to get too excited yeah. about. I think when I get down to like 2,000, then, then we make, I might make a bigger deal out of it. Uh, so, all right, well, I don't know what, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do when I uh, throw my keys out into the woods this afternoon and I, have a cake I know with, you, uh, some cake with you guys. I know Cake? What, you're not beers? You're not going to drink beers? You're not going to get loaded? Uh, like all this truck driver time I've spent, I couldn't uh, drink more than a beer at a time because of the BAC limit. Now I don't care. <laughs> hey, 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 Nagel. Careful. I'm going to be up there to see a Quanet. Oh, are you going to be there? All right. <laughs> hey. All right, so you know, let me you know, tell you, I might get I might get truck driver in your face at that little tent with the gals in the Plinko board there, all right? All right. All right. Well, well, keep your hands to yourself, there, right. pal. And, and and by the way, you should get yourself a T-shirt that says, "I may be retired, but I'm still a full-time pain in the ass." <laughs> enjoy your vac- oh, enjoy oh, your retirement, man. Dave. Congratulations. All right, man. Hey, you guys have a good morning. Good right. listening to you. Thank you. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Is this George? Hey, George. George what's up, George? Not, not too much. Hey, you guys ever think about playing less music in the morning? Yeah, we think about it all the time, but then uh, how else are we supposed to play uh, words with friends in between breaks? And yeah, Candy Crush. I, I'm Candy Crushing it pretty hard during the songs. Candy ain't going to crush itself, my friend. I mean, you got enough personalities on the show. You think you come up with some material, so you're not playing some that awful classic rock music. You know, when I hear uh, you talking like that, what I hear you saying is, I want the two of you to work harder. And I got to tell you, uh, that's yeah. not that appealing to me. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Work harder, come up with some more material. Yeah, they don't pay us enough for that. Yeah, no, if they, pay, if they give it the 10% increase, maybe we'll talk. Yeah, but the music's got to go. All right, well, thank you. All right. There you go. What are you going to do? Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Good morning. This is Bill from uh, Springfield. How are you back? Good, Terrific. Bill. Good, Bill. What's going on? Yeah, same old, same old. Hey, Steve, welcome back. I'm glad to hear you're back from your vacation. And uh, Bax, what do you? I got a question, and Steve, I got a question for you too. The same one. What do you Six think inches. of Howard Stern? I'm sorry. What? What do who, What do you think about Howard Stern as a uh, broadcaster? I'm not really aware of his work. Who is this guy you speak of? I've never heard of him before. You never heard of Howard Stern? I'm joking with you. Of course I have. <laughs> I, I think I, th- I I was I always enjoyed uh, listening. I I think he does fantastic interviews. I, I, think, I was. The, a, I think the interviews are pretty great. To be honest, I was a fan when I was in high school and could you know get a, a long distance AM radio yeah. signal when he's on uh, yeah. WNBC in the afternoon. Right. I used to listen to it all the time. Yeah, I tell you, you guys, Steve and Bax, you guys remind me. Of Howard Stern and Robin, you guys have a great show. Whoa, 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 and whoa! Hold on, hold on. Which <laughs> one's Robin? Uh, I would say Steve would be Robin. Oh. Bax, you would be Howard Stern. Okay, oh, yeah, okay I guess. I wanted to be Robin. I don't want to be oh, Howard. I, I want to be Robin. All right, thank okay, you. Okay, so you guys, you guys have a great day, and I want to give a shout out to Tim Abbott to. KC Fence Company, and I appreciate it very much, guys. Have a All great right. day. No, All pro- right. no problem. Thank you. Uh, Rock 102. Uh, Rock 102. Who's this? Uh, no, okay. There's that one, too. Okay. Gone. Right. There you go. All right. Well, they were. Co- ah, yeah, here we go. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, Joey from Wales. Hey, Joey from Wales. Hey. What's up? Uh, for the gentleman who said that uh, you guys need uh, more material and the music sucks, is he aware that he can change his channel? No, I, I don't, don't believe he I don't knows know that. If he knows that or not. We don't want him to change the channel. We just uh, want him to stop complaining about the music. <laughs> we listen to it every day. 
We probably hear it more than he does. Yeah, I can guarantee you we're sick of, more sick of it than he is. <laughs> well, you guys have a great day. All, All right. right, you All too. Right. Rock 102, good morning is this. Hey, good morning, boys. It's Vince the Plumber. Oh, it's Vince the Plumber. Ah, Vince, right, how are let's you, buddy? go down your stupid list of shout-outs. Let's do it. All right. Uh, Plumpton and Hills, <laughs> Dave, uh, Derek. <laughs> Uh, Jason. Let's see who else we got. Mike over there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, let's see all the boys over at FW Web. <laughs> sure. Let's see. Uh, we got Springfield Plumbing. You didn't. You didn't really come with a prepared list, did you, uh, Vince? No, I wasn't prepared for you to uh, call me out on it so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, well, anywho, you guys have a great long weekend. Uh, other than that, have a good one. Thank you, Vince. You too. This is well, uh, this is what I this is what I hear when I hear uh, Vince the Taylor, plumber. Cody, Dylan, Dermot, <laughs> Jordan, Taylor, Brittany, Wesley, Rumor, Scout, Cassidy, Zoe, Chloe, Max, Hunter, Kendall, Caitlin, Noah, Sasha, Morgan, Kira, Ian, Lauren, Hubert, Phil. <laughs> Yeah, Kids, it, we're eating dinner. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that, that, that's what Vince the Plumber sounds like. I want Plampton and Vance. I like the fact that Cletus used the word, the name Cubert. Cube, that, well, that, yeah, you one. gotta yeah, have that eighties reference. Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Who's this? Hi, this is Rick from Chicopee. How are you? Good, Good, Rick. What's, what's up? up? I just wanted to say you guys are working so hard. The music is great. Forget about what the other guys said, but oh, you guys yeah. are playing some good, good, relaxing. No, he's kind of right about that. <laughs> I, I kind of have yeah, to agree with him about that. Yeah, you guys very hard getting up early in the yeah. morning, just getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, you know, for the amount of money you guys get, and then getting all those records ready, you know, the, the classic 70s. and yeah, you know, These people don't see that, but, you know, <laughs> you guys do a great job. Just well, thank you. Just that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that you appreciate the effort that we're pouring into this. Getting the records yeah. ready. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dusting them off, yeah. taking them out of their jackets. Of- yeah, man, this turntable. Yeah. <laughs> How do you use this thing? Yeah, yeah. Blowing yeah. the dust Clean off the needle. needle. Every day. Yeah. Clean the needle. Yeah, all right. Hey, right. listen, thank you, and have a great weekend. Love you guys. Uh, love you. Love you, too. Right, there you go. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Steve from Chickaboo. Hey, what's up, Dave? Steve. Steve. What's up, Steve? Steve. Not too much. Yeah, I just want to say, Bax, that last Sunday, Sunday before, that night show you did, man, it was awesome. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. It's on every awesome, every dude. Sunday night at 9. Oh, dude, I'll tell you what. You must be tortured all week knowing that kind of music and having to play the crap you got to play. Well, he plays <laughs> too much music during that show. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. awesome. Awesome, dude. Really great show. Appreciate it. It's, it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I love listening guys in the morning, man. You get me to work. <laughs> Ooh, look at the maniacal laugh. I like that. <laughs> I hey, have a good weekend, boys. All right, you too. I listen every day. <laughs> <laughs> Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Peanut. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, there yes. you go. Well, that was probably the best call we had all morning. <laughs> One that makes the most amount of right. sense. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hi, good morning. This is Lisa from Connecticut. How are you doing? Uh, Good, Good, Lisa Lisa from Connecticut. What can we do for you? Great. I just called because I didn't know if you guys were aware. Do you remember the meteorologist from, I think it was Springfield, Ashley, is her name Ashley Baylor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ashley Baylor, yeah. Oh, God. I remember you guys always talking about her, and I just noticed, because I live in Connecticut, she's down on Channel 8, uh, Meteorology. Yeah, well, channel. most of them with know. talent go on to bigger and better things <laughs> after leaving here. Yes, apparently. Yeah. And I was just shocked that I, I saw this person that I actually heard so much about, um, such positive things, and she was... If you want to know, she was wearing a lovely purple jumpsuit. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, it's yeah. like a nice she's, meteorologist in a purple jumpsuit. If I'm not mistaken, she's Dive actually been at Channel 8 for a good long period of time. Oh, okay. Because, see, this is new to me. I uh, I had no idea, and I didn't know if you guys were up on the latest and wanted to keep you reporting, you know, her fashion and the important parts of meteorology. Well, so. uh, you can keep your uh, hot uh, meteorologist in a purple jumpsuit all day long. Have you ever seen a man crack walnuts with his calves? Because that's what Brian <laughs> Lapis does. 
<laughs> no, but I would love that. Yeah, yeah I would love that. walnuts, right? Yeah, let's, let's have a crack and walnut contest, and we'll see who can crack more walnuts. <laughs> Brian Lapis yeah, or... Yeah, we could uh, have that in Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, we're missing out. Yeah. Big time. All right. I, you don't want to see his yeah, chestnuts. No, no you don't want to see that. Yeah. No, you don't. All right, Lisa, have a good weekend. No, I don't want to see chestnuts. No, but thank no. you guys, and have a great week. You're welcome. All right, is there one more here? Should sure. we take the take yeah, a chance? Yeah, why not? Let's uh, do it. Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Yeah, it's Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, what's up? Two things. One, where's, where are... Where's Chet? Where is the anti the anti joke man? Yeah. Where did these guys well, just Chet, to? Chet from Palmer, Chet dad joke. Chet from Palmer hasn't called in a while here. I uh, was looking yeah. forward to his. Yeah, and uh, what the other callers? You mean like Mark from West yeah, Springfield? You know, right. Yeah. It, it's like I, I miss these guys. I'm getting tired of Vince, but you know it's like a little <laughs> joke here once in a while. Well, yeah. Nothing against Vince. Nothing against Vince. The other thing is the egg salad man. The famous egg salad, your friend. Oh, yeah, Barry. Barry Krieger, yeah. Barry, I make an egg salad, probably not like his, but ask him if he's ever tried putting in crumbled bacon. Ooh, crumbled Ooh, bacon, that's a bacon. game changer. There you go, that sounds pretty good. Bacon, bacon, bacon and egg salad. I, uh, try it. I it like is, it. I like that I, idea. I believe because of uh, Barry's high cholesterol issues, he's not eating much bacon these days. All right, use turkey bacon. What the hell? Actually, I take that back. That's worse than real bacon. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you, you, sweatshop egg salad? (laughs) Come on. (laughs) You were doing so well until you made that suggestion. All right, listen, thanks for the... Thanks very much. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Well, look at that. That was a uh, quite successful open line Friday. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. It's 824. We're back to Nagle on Rock 102. It's uh, 827 with Bax and Nagle on Rock 102. It's uh, going to be sunny and nice today with a high of 77. Tomorrow, sunny with a high of 82. It's 53 right now in downtown Springfield. You know, we could all use an extra uh, 1000 bucks in our pocket. I know you could. I certainly know I could. Uh, find out how easy it is to win by listening for details next Tuesday morning with us, Bax and Nagle, at 8 o'clock in the, uh, in the morning on Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Surprise! We have that kind of money to throw around around here. We don't. We're actually selling off equipment and, I believe, a couple of vehicles. We're going to the pawn shop this afternoon. Yes, yeah. we are going to. Uh, we're going to see how we do on consignment. Anybody want to pair of cheap Koss uh, headphones? <laughs> I had to take them off to see what brand they were. I believe we have some old uh, microphones that uh, aren't doing us any good need these days. Yeah, it's a Mister Microphone, actually. <laughs> hey, ladies! I'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> it's 829. We have news next to Rock 102. Here's your Western Mass News. It's uh, 821 with Pax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's uh, time for news. It's brought to you by Big Y, your family market. Sign up today to say with a My Big Y digital account. It's more than food. It's My Big Y. Visit your local Big Y today. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Oh yeah! Hey, hey, hey! Whoa! We we were in visit. We were in in charge of a conversation. Uh, no, you know what it is. I I I mentioned to you a Family Guy line just be- like two <laughs> seconds before we go on the air, and then we couldn't stop laughing about it. So uh, there you go. Oh, well. uh, police arrested a Springfield man who checked himself into Bay State Medical Center with gunshot wounds earlier in the day on Thursday after an investigation by Springfield Police's homicide unit. The patient, 37-year-old Thomas Whitlock, was charged with murder in connection with a shooting on Leland Drive at about 9 a.m. that morning as well. The other gunshot victim died at Bay State shortly after the shooting. Authorities have not identified the victim who died. Uh, the suspect and the deceased were well known to each other and are alleged to have shot one another, according to Ryan Walsh. Police arrested Whitlock at 12.15 p.m. while at Bay State. His arraignment is expected at a later date. Along with murder, Whitlock has been charged with carrying a firearm without a license, carrying a loaded firearm without a license, and discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a building. He's fighting that one, though. Walsh said the department's homicide unit and the Hamden DA's office will continue to investigate the incident. Uh, That's an early morning fight. Yeah, yeah. You wonder what the what the fight might have been about that early in the day. Nine a.m. Gun battle. Ah. 
a breakfast disagreement? I would think that it would be a breakfast disagreement. Uh, Couldn't be a McDonald's because that's open till 1030 for breakfast and it was nine o'clock. So it's not like they stopped serving egg McMuffins at 1030 and you got there at 1031 and missed it. Yeah, and from that part of uh, town, it probably you wouldn't get back home with uh, with McDonald's for another you know 15 minutes or so. Yeah, the whole timing is all messed up. Maybe it's not about breakfast. Maybe it's about to. Uh, well, what's on? Uh, maybe it's about that final hour of the Today Show. You know, oh, yeah, you, yeah, one yeah. guy want to watch the other Today Show. Another guy want to watch CNN or I can't cartoons. Stand, I can't stand Hoda and Jenna. I can't stand it. Turn this off. I don't want to turn it off. I'm watching it. You you gonna make me? You you gonna really take me to task on this? Yeah, I'm gonna take you to task. Oh yeah, well, pow 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 pow. There you go. That's not much of an argument. Yeah. Now we're watching. Uh, now we're watching uh, the other broad on the other show, the one who used to be with Regis. What's her name? <laughs> Kelly Ripa. Kelly Ripa. There you go. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a kick in the face? <laughs> it really was like a Kelly Ripa, you know, Hoda and Jenna argument that yeah. that that, that, that uh, sparked this. Hey, stranger things have happened. You know, <laughs> uh, here's an article out of the uh, Mass Live this morning. Just a few weeks ago, Terry Tree North was walking through Pulaski Park when he saw a person experiencing an overdose turning blue on a bench. This is up in Northampton. North said he rushed over and used naloxone or Narcan, an FDA approved drug to reverse opioid overdoses. Calling 911, North watched over the individual with others in the park until the paramedics came. Just a few weeks before, he had to use Narcan on someone else in Northampton who was experiencing an overdose. Many individuals uh, he has helped have been strangers, he said. He goes, you just walk over and you spray it up their nose and you hope for the best, North said. It tells you on the box, even after you Narcan someone, uh, you still need to call 911. Mm. North has been unhoused in Northampton for the past five years. In that time, he said he has seen an increase in overdoses in the community, having to use Narcan several times. North learned the importance of carrying Narcan with him at all times when he saw an 18-year-old experiencing an overdose under a bridge in Chicago a few years ago. This guy's like a he's like a wanderer, but he's like uh, he's like the good deed wanderer. Yeah, like a Superman. Like a Superman carrying Narcan around. With yeah. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for some other traveler that just happened to be there that had Narcan, this kid would have been dead. So ever since then, I've been trying to carry Narcan with me at all times. What they're talking about here in the story, and this is obviously. Uh, it's Overdose Awareness Month that we heard Kim Lee come in here and talk about yesterday. Yeah, Northampton is putting in these boxes, and I think they already have them there. It's the Outdoor Nalox Box. It's got Narcan inside of it. It's like right. a breaking case of emergency kind of thing. So it's not like something you have to have like a bunch of coins in your pocket for. No. Or, or you got to download the app first. But how sad is that that we require the need for these you, things. You know, but if you look at the numbers, yeah, Steve, I, it's hard know, to argue against it. I, it's I, like I how know. Do, you know, you know, people's lives can be saved, and maybe they can get the help they need to get off that stuff. But they, uh, these things look like the little free libraries. Yeah, right. You ever see the little free library? Yes. Uh, I was watching a Family Guy. They had a little free library, and it says, "Oh, it's how white people make giving away their trash seem like generosity." It's a little free library. <laughs> This has a much deeper uh, pur- pur- purposeful use, yeah. the, the Narcan inside. But the idea of those little free libraries, it is kind of like other people giving away their junk. Yeah. I, I got news for you. I, I'm the, if, if I'm taking the book away from your mini library, yeah. you're never going to see that book again. Have you ever taken one from those? No. My kids have. Really? Yeah. Did they return the book? We returned uh, 10 books. Wow. That's like restocking the entire library. Well, uh, there was no room left in it. Then we had to throw them in the dumpster afterwards. Hey, I just got a, 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 a an instant message from uh, from someone I know yeah. who uh, was at Festa last night in Ludlow. Uh huh. Apparently, last night on one of the uh, Wilbraham open forums on Facebook, yeah, people in Wilbraham were complaining of all the joy and noise from Ludlow. And people were being uh, all bent out of shape because Trailer Trash was playing. Yeah, you know, they they hit the stage like around you know eight fifteen last night. They played yeah. two hours, and uh, there's a bunch of uh, people in Wilbraham who apparently have never experienced a damn good time in their lives. Oh, you know how many years we had to listen to that noise from that Peach Festival, huh? Listen, you remember that? There were th- I, there were times I could hear all the chowing down of pie in East Longmeadow. Yeah. 
coming from Fountain Park. Right. And I don't want to listen to all that, uh, that, that pie chowing down. And the barber guy who would dress up like the peach with his happiness prancing around the streets. Remember that guy? The barber. I was up all night listening to that. But yeah, yeah, listen to that. You can hear that. Uh, you can hear that uh, all the way in uh, in Long Meadow. Oh, they cause a racket up there. People at Wilbraham complaining about the noise from in festival. Ludlow. I mean, but, come on, you're all, you're you're miles yeah, from but, Ludlow. But what time? But it's over by like what time is it over by? Isn't it over by like ten o'clock? It's they, not, it, they, it, eleven o'clock is when it has to. Uh, everything has to uh, shut down. But That's, does the music play until eleven o'clock? No, they were doing two hours, so they would have finished by like around ten fifteen. That's so it would have been forty five minutes of uh, yeah, everything right. breaking down. Actually, I think the DJ was was playing for a while, but that was only until again eleven, 11 o'clock. o'clock. So what are, what are people complaining about? You know what it is? There's just a bunch of busybodies who think uh, who think uh, and a bunch of do gooders who think they got a better way. Have you seen the post on the forum? I've been looking for it, so I, I haven't found it yet. But apparently, that was a uh, that was. Some conversation last night in the, some of these Wilbraham forums. Uh, let's see. I'm looking uh, Red Bridge. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend at the farm at Fern Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going over to Fern Valley uh, tomorrow. No, are you really? There's a music uh, plan sure. over there. Um, well, anyway, you don't, yeah, have, to, you don't have, to, you have to scour them now. I'm just saying that well, the, this is what I'm hearing. If, uh, if it's wrong, then it's wrong. But if it's right, well, then you people in Wilbraham better start thinking twice about what you consider to be joyful fun. Uh, oh, here it is. Here's one. You ready? Yeah. How long will the music from Ludlow Festa continue? It's been all day. Yes, it's a festival. Well, yeah, that's what it, it's it's there for. What do you, what, what, do you, what do you expect supposed to happen during a festival? And this lady, uh, she's uh, got her head on straight. She said, I think the music should be enjoyed. We're lucky in Western Mass to still have a community that celebrates things and that people should get together and share culture, heritage, and neighbors. Listen, Grateful. La- last night, I'm ha- I'm breaking Bafana with uh, Bob Stanek from uh, from trailer trash okay yeah, uh-huh. he's got one i got one it's yeah we're like toasting uh, ludlow with our bafanas anyway uh at no point during their show did anybody in the band say hey everybody in ludlow shh the people in wilbraham are trying to sleep shh keep it down everybody stop having so much fun one lady points out you must be new around here <laughs> this happens every year, the same weekend. If you don't like these things, maybe plan a vacation next year. Fest yeah. is a festival, that, and then somebody responded to that. Apparently, you don't have school children, so the person should plan a vacation so the children lose out on days of precious school. Listen, I used to be able to hear the uh, <laughs> the racing going at, at Riverside Park when I lived in uh, in Springfield back in the uh, the early nineties. Yeah. Did I come? Did you hear me go into the mass live forums to complain about it? No. no. Well, you might have under a pseudonym uh, just to start up controversy, like sure. people used to do on the mass live forums. Uh, I like this one. Strap in. The party's about five days long. <laughs> <laughs> Fireworks and shenanigans all day. Uh, I'm right across the river, and it's pretty loud here, but it's not bad. I look forward to hearing it every year. Again, are you new to this area? <laughs> it's Festa. And then somebody finally points out, are we really doing this? This is done every year. Uh, it's, like know, a, it's like complaining about the fireworks on the 4th of July. You, Again? With you, the noise? You know what's even worse than the forums of these towns? Because it's mostly the boomers chiming in on the, on this right. whole thing. And it's like, okay, old man, let's uh, calm, calm, <laughs> calm your sweater puppies down, right? The next door app. Have you ever? Do you, are you on next oh, door? You know what? Yes. And oh I get, my god, that is like the biggest dr- drama show uh, going right and now. And I've tried to get out of it. I, I'd like try to cancel it, and I keep receiving like email notifications of everybody who's trying to find who can remove bees from a garage. And I was like, "Come on now, please." It's not even that they do. They do this weird. Like, they start arguing about uh, stupid, stupid things. It's not even just can you make me a recommendation. It's uh, oh, I know. Please slow down. I was I was running this morning and I saw three beautiful deer and two of them almost got hit by cars. For the love of God, slow down. <laughs> You could slow down to two miles an hour and still hit a deer. Yeah, I was going to say, the deer can hit you. 
you know, and often do. That's usually their fault. It's just, uh, it's. Uh, That's why their insurance premiums are so high in know, the deer world. And like I said, most people are looking for like you know contractors and things like that. Uh, and then this lady, a local farmer, promised he would take my horse manure this pile this past fall, but he has not removed it yet. Does anybody want free horse manure? Do I? Yeah. <laughs> But honestly, oh. the idea of someone complaining about, you know, all the way from Wilbraham of the noise in Ludlow. When is the noise going to stop from the fun? Even the people in Ludlow, the people that don't go to Festa, don't complain about the noise. No. Because it happens every year. Because nobody really cares. Yeah. And the Cardinals coming. So, yeah. you know, they'll, they they can uh, tune to two or three nights of noise. Just to see the Car- you know, Cardinal O'Malley coming into town, yeah. totally worth it. I've never heard anybody from uh, Stockbridge Court complaining about the free concerts going on at MGM every Friday. They were like, wow, there's life going on down here. I like the sound of that. Yeah. I, there, there's, you know? some, there's some people in like uh, in Lennox get all hacked off because there's so much of the horrible noise coming from yeah. Tanglewood. Yeah. Is there anybody in Stockbridge going, rock a sweet baby James again? <laughs> How many times do we have to hear this damn song? Oh, if I hear fire and rain one more time, I'm going to oh, rip the ears God. off of my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> that young cowboy yep. that lives on the rain. <sighs> yeah. Never. Well, I'm not going to continue to be his friend. Yeah, I don't want to be his <laughs> friend anymore. Your uh, Pioneer Valley forecast today going to be sunny with a high of 76. Tomorrow, sunny with a high of 82. It's 55 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, oh, yeah. Summer to Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 851 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be sunny and nice today with a high of 76. Tomorrow, sunny and nice with a high of 82. It's 55 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, you're going to be at uh, MGM uh, Springfield tonight at mm-hmm. the Plaza for Free Music Friday. Aquanet is the uh, the band playing tonight. That is going to be a damn fine time. And you know what? The, the weather tonight and tomorrow and throughout the entire weekend is going to be so perfect. That if you don't show up to some of the things that are going on this weekend, you're doing yourself a yeah. grave disservice. Are you hearing me, Wilbraham? Yeah, can you hear us? Can you hear us having fun? Or, or are your ears so deafened, yeah. deafened that you cannot hear my words? I just responded to that post because somebody was complaining about the noise from Festa in Wilbraham. Yeah. And I uh, I agreed. I said, ban Festa. And I put a picture of John Lithgow from Footloose when he tried <laughs> to ban dancing in the town. Here's my Here's my little challenge. For, uh, for you fine folks who listen to us. Go into a community forum, write some absurd question, and see if you can get uh, rile people up. That's some, a, dumb, some dumb little thing like that. No, yeah. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, you know. Nothing, uh, of, nothing offensive. No, but nothing just offensive something... and nothing like, nothing so unreal that it causes panic or anything like that, but just something yeah. dumb to complain about. You know what? And, uh, and then take a screenshot of it and then send it to me. Something picky yeah. Yeah, something like small and insignificant to most people, but you sound like you're all bent out of shape yeah, about it. Yeah, get like real bent out of shape about it. Not only, uh, you know, not just Wilbraham, but any community forum. Yeah. Uh, particularly Long Meadow, because I like to see things get all bent out of shape over that, over the smallest. Yes, thing. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Because, uh, yeah, they, that that's a town that likes to complain a little bit. Well, any any town though, you just complain about something and it, it, and make it innocuous. Make it like nothing, like it really has no meaning on something, but would cause other people to get upset that you're upset. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, I like that idea. What? Say, say I'm say I'm really uncomfortable with the parking situation. Yeah, outside. The old hooky lot. Yeah, but I mean, there's like no reason to be really upset about the parking lot, but just say I've got a real problem with parking at the meeting house. Yeah, it's a, it's Bax and Nagel's uh, uh, mundane complaint. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, right. You can complain about something, and we'll uh, we'll see if uh, anybody if it picks up steam. Yeah. Now again, there's nothing wrong with that parking lot, but yeah. someone is going to say, "Yeah, you're right. You're right. I got a problem with that too. I got a problem, a big problem with that parking lot." And then you'll have people say, "What's wrong with it?" And and people will say, "You mean you don't know?" Yeah. <laughs> and though it'll blow up like that. You know what? You start a controversy in Longmeadow by uh, criticizing people who go get Botox shots. 
Yeah, yeah right. Like, oh, what, what is all this traffic inside that long metal plaza with these people walking in and out of that shot shop getting their lips pumped up every day? How are you supposed yeah. to drink your hot lattes yeah. from uh, from Starbucks, Starbucks with no feeling in your lips? Yeah, how you doing that? Yeah, let, let's start something like that. I like starting <laughs> controversy. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. good to start yeah, problems. It's always good I fun. agree with you. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh, so we'll be back on, on Tuesday of next week uh, with uh, Scott Cohen and uh, other things. So uh, prepare yourself for that. Other things, including tickets we have to give away, don't we? Uh, oh, damn some... it. You know, I almost forgot about that. One yeah. of the big things that's happening this weekend is uh, the Three County Fair in uh, Northampton. And uh, we happen to have tickets right now. Tenth caller at two nine three one zero two one. Yeah, imagine that. One more thing you can do this weekend. You're going to raise the roof so loud that the people from Hadley are going to be bitching about your fun that you're having. Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah you might want to keep the noise down. Yeah, because the people across the bridge don't don't take kindly to all that noise in Northampton. We don't take kindly to your kind around here. You and your three county fair loving people over there. <laughs> Them trying to chuck like asparagus spears at all across the river. That guy doing the little piglet races, I can't stand his voice. I can hear him all the way up in Greenfield. Isn't it bad enough that you got that airport with planes yeah. always coming, coming in and out going, of there? Yeah, man. <laughs> Somebody needs to clean this town up. Again. How about a little free library with some Narcan in it? <laughs> <laughs> Again, 293 1021. Good luck on Rock 102. If you've got a phone in your pocket, you're 